Good evening, everyone. I will call the Marion Township Board of Supervisors meeting for July to order. The time is now 7.02 p.m. Uh, the first item that we have on is uh, public comments. Uh, we do not have anyone on the Zoom session, Sue. Uh, if there were any public comments that were emailed or called in, no, okay. And do we have anybody who would like to make a public comment this evening? If you have signed in, please come to the front and uh, state your name and address clearly into the microphone. Well, I'll let them public comment and then go into it. Wait, Peter. What was that? Okay. Do you want this? We, we can do it after. Okay, wait, wait. Well, hold on. We didn't do the pledge. We can do it after. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. So um, if you would, uh, the microphone. Well, yeah. <laughs> All right, 127 My question is, the speeding through town is horrendous. And since we dropped it to 25 miles an hour, most people are 50, 60, and I cannot believe how fast they are going through town. Why can they not do something with stop signs or something? So stop signs are kind of stop signs are kind of a complicated thing i'm actually personally in favor of a stop sign but there are certain warrants and requirements that you have to meet that are very difficult now so line of sight uh andy keep me honest on a couple of the other things but there's line line of sight no 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 line line of sight you have there that has to meet you can see it's a safety concern yeah but you have to meet certain requirements to I wish the engineer was here to recite them off the top of his head, but I don't see why we would not. There's yeah. there's a number of them, and the one of the things that we've been looking at is traffic calming, things like the stop signs. We, I know we had talked about speed bumps in the past, and nobody likes the idea of speed bumps, myself included. Uh, but stop signs, if we can get one, there are two spots where it would be potentially possible. Not making any promises, but potentially possible would be at uh, Water Street, potentially at Church and Main. And Sharf, where Sharf and Maine is, is actually pretty clear. You can see pretty well there. But the, the thought that I've had in my brain that we've talked about before is if you have at least one stop sign, it's probably going to break up traffic flow a little bit. Additionally, when we're painting lines this year, we're going to be painting outside lane lines on Main Street to visually narrow the road, which is one of the things that you can do for traffic calming. Generally, people tend to speed less when the road feels narrower. The yeah. I mean, I, I just don't understand. Why. No, this is something we were actually we yeah. discussed at the workshop and we're working on it. No. We really are working on yeah, it. it's, there's, there's, it's, it's not as simple as just putting a sign up. I would be yeah. delighted to put a sign up, but there's a number of things that have to go into that from like a legal and regulatory standpoint. And we have to make sure that we, we do all of those things in order to properly place signs. Even something as simple as placing a dangerous intersection sign required an ordinance to do. And that was basic. There's literally no enforcement against it's a, an FYI style sign. So something like a stop sign, there's a lot more requirements from the state and everywhere else to actually put that in place. But it's not a state vote. No, but you still have to follow state law on, on sign placement. Yeah. No, this is something we're yeah. all concerned about. This is something we, I think just about every meeting we've been bringing it up and we've been talking with the engineers to what we can do and Andy as well. So no, we're working on it. We're, we're trying to figure out what we can do. I mean, this was brought up years ago. And I know. Mm -hmm. like nothing is ever done. I know. Yeah. Can I ask for a question? Certainly. Sure. What, in, in your opinion, when do you think it's the worst? What days or what time is that? <laughs> All the time. All the time. It's all the time, but I think maybe around supper time, I would say like three to seven, not here. I mean, I just, I'm speaking from when I sit there, and I don't sit there every day or at certain times, but when I sit there, if I sit there, I, I usually try to sit at the church across from the town road. That's usually what I say. And then we kind of set out further where the girl was struck by the car when she was walking, and then we kind of set out along uh, like Mr. Kepley's house. But when I sit at the church, I maybe see an average of Three, four cars in a half hour period. And and I'm not gonna sit here and say that people don't go faster than this, but the fastest I usually get is 45 I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm not arguing, yeah. but I'm not saying yeah. I'm saying right sitting there. 
I'm getting wow. that. Yeah, yeah, basically that. double. Wow. Well, I disagree. I, again. No, I, oh. I, I, know, I, I know. I know. I'm just yeah. saying I'm sitting here. That's what I'm. That's what I have. For, 40, 45 is still far too fast for that road. I gotta get a date for A1. If we're busy on call yeah. or when, when we have time, so that's why I asked her when specifically she felt it's the worst time that I can try and make an appointment to let Ryan know or myself know, make an appointment, try to get down there and sit for a half hour. Thank you. I'm going to tilt it down just a little bit. Thank you. 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 It's still on the garage. Yeah, yeah. We, we had it. We got data off of it for people speeding, but we can't issue citations with the sign. And I know in the past, even like when you were on the board, we've supplied information to the police department of, of certain times. It really hasn't netted much of a difference in people's behavior in terms of speeding or the ability to, to flag people. It's very, very variable uh, in terms of when people decide to go tearing through town. And I, I know you're right. I've, I've seen it happen personally as I've been driving around, but it's difficult to try to get enforcement on, which is why we're looking at whatever we can in terms of trying to maybe get people out of the accidental habit of going too fast. A lot of people, you have a nice wide open road, you go a little too fast. Not saying it's right or wrong, but that that happens. When you have a visually narrower road, like if you ever have to drive through construction, like through a cattle chute, generally people tend to slow down. So. 25 miles an hour. Yeah. yeah, if you have people that are, are doing that, they may not be paying attention to street signs. Or you have people that, no matter what we do, they're just going to drive way too fast, and it becomes an enforcement problem that the police have to deal with. But we are we are actively looking at things that we can do and how to go about doing it so that we can try to alleviate the problem. I don't know if we're going to ever completely solve it, but try to make it better than it is. That's yeah, I'll, I'll agree with that, Roy, that it does having that there does slow people down, but then so does having a stop sign at a certain spot or having the visually narrower lane. It's something we can certainly keep into the mix of things. I'm not opposed to it, but it's just not something that we put out there because it didn't really net us a lot of benefit. Thank you for your comment, though, by the way. Yeah. Beverly. Yep, Beverly. Thank you for your comment. I don't see any reason. It's just, it's just the, the, the spring. I don't know anything about yeah. it. But I'd love to paint that wall. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I know you had yeah. at one oh, point floated the. You still have permission to stack no heavy equipment. I don't think we'd need yeah, heavy no. equipment. We, yeah. 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 We, we, yeah would, we would we'd get something in writing too. And, and days and, and, right. and speak right. to everyone and make sure, yeah, a specific time frame. And you don't have to knock on the door and say, hey, we're coming today. You're just walking home on the property. <coughs> you have the time. Thank, Thank you. It. We appreciate it. It's painted. Yeah, it's painted. <laughs> it's, it's kind of white. It's seen some age, but it started out yeah. white paint. It could use a couple yeah. of coats. Yeah, speaking yeah. honestly, it could use a little yeah. TLC. Yeah. Do we have any other public comments? 
neon thing was on there. Okay. So at this time, we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, we oftentimes do that uh, up front, but got moved down. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item is to approve the minutes of the June 19th, 2021 workshop meeting. A motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Next is to approve the minutes of the June 24th, 2021 Board of Supervisors meeting. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, next up is the minutes for the June, uh, July 24th, 2021 workshop meeting, which have not been completed yet. So we'll have to review them at the next Board of Supervisors meeting for approval. Uh, Irene, would you like to do the treasurer's report? Yep. Um, nothing really much to comment about. Uh, we did submit the application for the township to uh, have credit cards. And I just have to bring them one more piece of information that's moving along. Um, would you like me to just make a comment about the budget? Certainly. Uh, at the last meeting, I realized I was pulling up some different reports on the computer. If anyone watched the workshop meeting on YouTube or not, and I have a corrected uh, budget, if anyone wants to take a look, they're more than welcome to. And we're pretty much on target for where we're at with our planned budget for 2021. So if anyone has any concerns about that, um, Really, that's about it. Thank you. It segues nicely into the payment of the bills for July 2021. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. First item on the official agenda is the Stonecroft infield. Uh, this basin was made deeper previously, but it is not draining. Uh, our engineer did not approve this plan. It was uh, subsequently approved by BCCD. Uh, Stone Group, the developer, needs to resolve this issue as uh, it's pretty profound how much water that retention pond is retaining. Um, we have not heard any updates or received any new design at this time, but that will be a requisite for them being able to close out any letters of credit that they have. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the Catterman Hill Road and Stouchford Road intersection. Uh, at last month's Board of Supervisors meeting, a motion was made to adopt the ordinance for the dangerous intersection and stop signs ahead. Uh, however, we kind of neglected the fact that it had to be advertised. So uh, after some back and forth with Andy via email, uh, we at the workshop amended the motion that we had to be for adoption or excuse me, for advertising rather than adoption as the ordinance was advertised in the Reading Eagle. Um, everything now being in order, it is in such a state that we could motion to adopt that ordinance tonight. Cool. So if anybody wants to make a motion other than me, feel free. Otherwise, I'll make a motion to adopt the uh, dangerous intersection and stop sign aheads uh, ordinance for Catterman Hill Road and Stouchburg Road intersection. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the culvert on Marion Drive by Jacob Weiss. Uh, we did not unfortunately get the dirt gravel and low volume gravel road grant, uh, but we, I think we've gotten the, no, we actually we're waiting on that one. We have the other one from Marion Drive. So we we're still waiting for a cost estimate from McCarthy Engineering on having our road crew do that project. Um, or maybe, wait, hold on. Do I have these two mixed up? Drive. Yes, there's well, there's okay. two Marion drives. So okay, we we have Jacob received Weiss. one of them. I think this is this is the Jacob Weiss one that we got just okay. a little bit ago. So the oh. yeah, oh, we got it. Yeah, that's the one that was okay. uh, that Sue attached later. Um, so the culvert for that one is looking like 
about $60,000. The price estimate given to us by McCarthy Engineering was $59,423.79. Um, it's actually a little bit lower than we were originally anticipating. No, that's uh, the wrong one. Yeah. That's the wrong one? It I apologize. It is attached. It okay. should be attached. Okay, so I, I mixed up the, the two from Marion Drive, so. It should be number three. It should be right after the I don't, oh, 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 so you actually put it in the scan. Mm -hmm. Okay. That one, I didn't, not the other one. Thank you, Sue. I was looking at the one that was sent out in email. <clears throat> okay, so that one, yeah, that one's wow. right. That's more like what I thought it was going to be. Okay. Okay, so the one at Jacob Weiss, for just for clarity on the record, the culvert at Marion Drive for Jacob Weiss, that one is just over 90,000. That's okay. $91,539.37, which is very close to what the other yeah. culvert that we had previously priced out was. Yeah. Um, the other culvert on Marion Drive, north of School Road, that one is the one that came in cheaper. That one was uh, a little over the uh, $59,000 mark. Mm -hmm. As we had talked about at one of the other meetings, uh, I think we should focus on using some of the liquid fuels money and the allocations yeah. that we have for road work towards culvert repair rather than doing additional oil and shipping in 2021. Uh, now that we have uh, build out for, in terms of design and cost for those three culverts, I know the one on Sheridan Road, we're just waiting for the, the permitting, the chapter 105 permit to come back. I think we should start the other two in motion so that we can have the what are the numbers on that? Like, on the, the culvert rough, rough for, for that culverts. one? Okay. For, do you, so, need to, do you need to repeat them all? Um, so just, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so this one, item number three, is yes. 91539 Yeah. And, okay. and the other one is uh, $59,423.79. And then we still have uh, the paving that was done. Yeah. And that was 97. And that was 97. Yeah. Okay, that eats up pretty much our budget. It's it's amazing how fast yeah. that goes. But I think it's money better yeah. spent on the culverts than oh. it is on road resurfacing. It's, again, things we have to do, things that we're chasing. Yeah. So with that, I would like to have McCarthy uh, move forward on getting the requisite permitting for those two culverts, like we okay. did on the first one, uh, so we can keep them in motion and try to get them done before end of year. Yeah, just a FYI, we have about uh, 316,000, I want to say, in uh, liquid fuels to use for these uh, purposes. So we're going to eat up about 247,000, uh, roughly, with all the road work that we have now. Which is well within budget. Yeah, yeah. But uh, praying for no unforeseen emergencies. Yeah, we'll cross our fingers. Yeah. Um, with either of those additional projects, I know we've, this is not the first time we've reviewed either one of those things or talked about it. The... The estimates, like I said, I'm pleasantly surprised that other one came back in as low as it did, um, seeing as two of them had come in around the $90,000 mark previously. Um, do you guys have any questions around that? No. Okay. No. Um, in that case, I'll make a motion to authorize McCarthy Engineering to pursue uh, the requisite permitting for the two culvert projects on Marion Drive. Second. Thank you. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the Spur Road and School Road intersection at last month's. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank, thank you, Jenny. Um, okay. The culvert on uh, Sheridan Road, not much of an update there. We're still waiting for the Chapter 105 permit to come back. Uh, this is one that we had started a number of months ago for trying to get in gear so that the road crew could replace that. Uh, it does consist of uh, several costly components uh, for a box culvert and head walls. Uh, guardrail also was uh, a fairly expensive component in that particular project. Next item is Spur Road and School Road intersection. At last month's meeting, we authorized the cost of $1,000 for Talpahawkin Talpahawk Township to lay five feet of macadam at the intersection of Spur Road. Uh, Talpahawken uh, Roadmaster was notified. I have not been out there yet. I don't know if they did that, but usually Butch Fike is pretty timely. So I'd imagine he's probably done that at this point. Um, I'll have to make it a point of driving out there. I just haven't had a chance to be out that direction. Uh, with that said, the rest of the project looked nice the last time I was out. So they did, they did a very good job with that. 
um, road project 2021 is the last road related item on the agenda. Um, we had several roads oil and chipped. Uh, this was awarded to Marvin Paving, Paving Incorporated for a total of $95,350.32. Uh, we did receive a change order for $1,920.73, bringing the total bill to $97,000. $261.61. Uh, the change order was the result of one of the roads being wider in a certain area and requiring additional material and time. Um, a motion was made at the workshop meeting to approve the chain or change order and pay the bill of the $97,261.61. Next is the Aikens Accounting Audit. Our 2020 audit is complete and has been advertised in the Reading Eagle on 7-8-21. Uh, it was submitted to DCED and approved. Um, Irene, is there anything that you'd like to add around um, the audit? Just a wonderful group to work with, very detailed oriented, and I'm very pleased at their level of review of our accounting methods. And they've made a lot of very nice suggestions we, which we've already have implemented. And I'm looking forward to working with them for this upcoming year with Dan. Where's Dan? <laughs> <laughs> Lots of paperwork for us to do, Dan. <laughs> no shortage of paperwork. Yeah. Okay, next item is the website. The website is live. I'm still waiting to get the redirector on the old website completed with the county. Um, as time has permitted, I have started uploading little bits to the website as I can. Uh, for example, the trash and recycling schedule is now on the calendar. So I'll chip at that. Uh, hopefully over the next couple of days, I'll have some additional time that I can put like our meetings, the workshop and the board of supervisors. Um, Don, I may need to reach out and make sure I have an up-to-date MTCA schedule. That way I can add that onto the calendar as well. Um, also at some point in the near future, I'd like to sit down with like you or Kelly and give you access to the website too, so that you could post things should you want to. Um, so lots of good utility there. We just have to, to start using the tool now that we have it in the toolbox. Yep. Okay. Next up is the Cold Summit Farmers Preserve Industrial Park Traffic Planning and Design. Uh, this project is predominantly in Mill Creek Township in Lebanon County. Uh, Wolmelsdorf Borough is willing to share the costs of the traffic study with us, and they have appointed TPD to do the traffic impact study. Uh, Jim has kindly volunteered to be our point person. Uh, this project has only a 1.4 acre footprint within Marion Township, but it is basically right on our back doorstep. So there is a pretty heavy concern from a lot of residents, especially those along Main Street and in Stonecroft on how this is going to affect uh, our day-to-day -day lives in terms of traffic flow for such a large project. Um, McCarthy Engineering's recommendation um, is around the plan waiver. Uh, the developer asked us to waive the planning. Uh, McCarthy Engineering actually advised to uh, approve this at, under the assumption of reimbursing the township for traffic planning and design review. Um, I don't think we really have to do anything with that no. yet. So I would say let's just wait. Yeah. Yes, Dan. Yeah, good question regarding this project here. Where does Cold Summit stand on the contract? Is this a signed contract? Deal? No, as far as I understand on this, it's not a done deal. A lot of times with large industrial developments, before any money actually changes hands for purchasing a property, there's usually contingents in place for planning, zoning, things like that, because they don't want to buy a huge tract of land under the assumption of putting in like a warehouse or some other large operation, only to have it fall through in some other, again, zoning or, or okay. local government aspect. Yeah, this is this is early on. This is kind of the opening salvo of something like that, which is why it's important that we make any necessary objections to it and do like things like the traffic study so that if there is a chance of blocking something like this, that you, we could do it. Uh, Jenny, did I see your hand? Um, is yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we actually it was a contingent of us going in to essentially uh, lodge an objection we wanted to go in with this 50 50 on Wolmelsdorf that we want to go into that completely in lockstep with them because it, it's going to impact us a little bit it's probably going to impact Wolmelsdorf tremendously more so we want to be kind of a, a unified front on this and making sure that our residents and their residents don't have an adverse impact of a, a huge warehouse or other industrial complex going it, in it will probably impact Wolmelsdorf even more because as i understand it the traffic is supposed to flow into the borough of Wolmelsdorf down 419. Yeah. 
believe it or not. Yeah, we're, we're looking at, realistically, being honest here, we're looking at a small percentage of the traffic that's anticipated, but it's still considerably more traffic than we're used to getting on our roads. Has anyone reached out to Revenant County regarding this project? Not to my knowledge. However, there is something that Jim's going to be participating where there's uh, going to be representation in meetings in the future as more of this progresses. And uh, much like anything else, like with the open space planning that we did, there's there's going to be meetings around this. I can all but guarantee it. Okay, next item on the agenda is building maintenance. Uh, this is kind of a, a hot topic item. Uh, we have been getting quotes for meeting room renovations from various companies, Erig Construction, Bachman Roofing, uh, Blatt Construction, Incas Construction, Mike's Remodeling. Uh, we did also receive a quote from Carl Keith uh, to add central air conditioning to all three heat pumps. Uh, we also got a ballpark price for sidewalk in front of the building. And uh, Irene, I'll actually, I'll turn it over to you okay. since you've been largely helming this. Right. So if anyone wants to take a look, we actually have a list of the things that we kind of a wish list in here on, on this meeting room alone. We want to try to make the experience better for all of us. Uh, hopefully have a projection up on the wall so we could have the agenda. We could have all the items that we're reviewing projected behind us. Drop ceiling, uh, removing some of the pipes and the non-functioning things that are in this room. And unfortunately, we really do need windows. So I embarked on this journey of trying to get estimates just for this room alone. If you look on the drive and you see some of the estimates, they're all over the place. Some people include some stuff, some people include everything, some people just included windows. It's a little bit frustrating because the list is there for every single contractor to take a look at. And I don't understand why we're getting these kind of mixed quotes about things. So we started to look around at the whole building and see things that really need to get done. I don't know about you guys. I'm not so happy when I pull in the parking lot and my car goes down. There's a sidewalk missing out front. Um, it was brought to our attention. We kind of knew about it, but some of the brickwork on the exterior of the building, since we had a window that was replaced that blew out, um, that contractor took a look and said, you know, there's a problem with the bricks. So we're going to have someone take a look at the brickwork. So we are just gathering numbers at this point. Point. During our last workshop meeting, and I think the meeting before that, we started to say, well, hey, we're, we're taking a look at maintenancing this building, and we want to decide whether or not it's worth it to fix up this building. And I know at the last meeting, um, a number of people I brought up, is it worth it to save the building? And so I took a look at some of the historic uh, renovation, not, excuse me, historic preservation sites this building doesn't meet any criteria. So I have that information if anyone else wants to take a look at it. From a national standpoint, we don't meet any criteria. There's no local organization that's going to throw lots of money at this building because it doesn't meet national criteria. And I don't believe there's anything within the state. All the web pages I tried to pull up are non-functioning. They're just not there. I don't think anyone really has money for it at this point, unfortunately, because of COVID, at least not at the state level, but certainly nothing local or at the state level is available. And there's no criteria that we meet for a national um, rescue in that respect. So we're gathering numbers. We're going to look to see what we need to do to make this building more maintainable. Nothing's about prettying up the place. It's all about what needs to be done. So we need to get heat and air. What were the rooms? This room. What are the other local? Well, the, what are the other locations in the building? So we have heat in pretty much the whole right. first floor. The right. second floor does not have anything. Okay. Uh, we had gotten quotes about getting air conditioning in the first floor so that we could get rid okay. of the window units. Okay. Um, which would really just make everything better, and especially if we get new windows. Um, but uh, the second floor is really the yeah the the big area of. Yeah. Cost. Okay. So, so we're looking at putting together numbers so we could take a look at what are the costs to bring the building up to a bare minimum maintenance, because unfortunately it's been neglected for a very long time. I understand why it may have been overlooked, but it can't be overlooked anymore. Windows are blowing out. They need to be replaced. It's a heating and cooling issue too, because we're losing so much air essentially with the way these windows are now. You could see all the leakage around it. You see how the paint and, and the frame itself were, is all cracked. So it's not just a, oh, I want a pretty place. It's not that at all. It's, it's the things that need to be done that, that should have been done all along. We're gonna take a serious look at that and see what our next step needs to be if we're gonna implement any changes here. So if anyone wants to see this criteria, um, I listed the, the website on it as well. If anyone wants to look at it and look for themselves.
Peter, do you want to do the change order to the windows? Now? Yes, I was actually flipping through to see if I saw that anywhere. I didn't, uh, I didn't have it on. Okay. Because you just brought it in today. Was the uh, actually the full price full price was there? So, um, the window so that we had done on the two rear windows. two windows on the rear portion of the building, um, there was a cost increase of two hundred dollars between the original quote and the time of installation. Uh, Mike provided a kind of updated invoice. Um, the invoice that he supplied is that total that eighteen hundred dollars is that total. that's total mm -hmm. okay so the original quote that we had gotten was sixteen hundred dollars mm -hmm. and the final price for all said and done was one thousand eight hundred dollars um, i'll make a motion to authorize the change order increase in price to a total of one thousand eight hundred dollars to mike's remodeling second roll call peter aye irene aye jim aye so also, do you want to bring up about the bees? Oh. Yeah, uh, Irene, take it away. Again, when uh, Mike was kind enough to restore, well, replace the window that blew out, found some bees and wasps, and it was- in So there are bees going <laughs> in the wooden sill. There are bees going in the holes <laughs> where there is no mortar between the bricks. There are no bees inside. I was upstairs. So where those bees are going, I don't know. They're in the brick somewhere. But I actually stood outside the other day for about 15 minutes and I saw four bees going in and out <laughs> of various holes in the bricks. So they're in there somewhere. And the bricks bowing in this the, too. Yeah, yeah. The, the walls bowing. Yeah, the way they did There's that cracks out there. That garage door or the garage doors, I should say. Uh, I, has lended itself to that wall heaving. I don't know if it's heaving slowly or if it heaved all at once and has been stable ever since, but it's it's certainly not, it's not plumb anymore. Right. So, so bottom line, we're, we're weighing our options on how best to approach uh, the space for Marion Township's municipal building. Okay, next up is the American Rescue Plan Act. Um, again, this is one that's been pretty close to, to your wheelhouse, Irene, so I'll let you take over on this one. Okay, again, uh, information about the American Rescue Plan is online. If anyone wants to look at some pretty comprehensive information, you could all go to psats.org. This is a website both myself and Sue have been following weekly for updates. Um, there's specific things that we can uh, utilize the money for. The Treasury Department is coming up with new regulations pretty much on a weekly basis. So for right now, we did receive our first installment of funds, which was $100,840.79. At the workshop meeting, we discussed that we're going to place that into our savings account right now because we're allowed to keep any interest gained on those funds. Because of the difficulty in understanding the regulations and the, the very narrow constraints with those funds, we're just gonna sit on it for right now. Um, we don't wanna make a mistake because if we make a mistake, we have to pay the money back. So we wanna wait to see essentially what other townships and boroughs are doing with the money, what new regulations the treasury department comes down with. And so we could go ahead, come up with a solid plan and apply it and use those funds correctly without any penalties. So Peter, uh, excuse me, Sue had listed some of the um, requirements Number one is responding to the COVID-19 emergency or addressing its negative economic impacts, providing pay to eligible workers performing essential work or grants to eligible employers that have eligible workers, lost revenue replacement for the provisions of government services due to the COVID-19 emergencies, to make necessary investments in water, sewer, and broadband infrastructure. We cannot use it for roads or bri bridges. We cannot deposit those funds in pension funds and it cannot be used in any offsets to um, any revenue resulting from any state tax cuts. So there's a lot of no's and very few yeses to what we could do with those funds. We're being very careful. We're trying to keep up with the information and we wanna come up with a solid plan of things that we can do for it. Initially, some of the thought was perhaps renovating the garage for an office space, but again, that's kind of being tabled for now. We wanna see what we could use the money for and see how, again, we could use those funds in relating it back to the community so the community can um, participate and benefit from those funds as well. 
Thank you, Erin. Uh, did you mention that we're getting oh. about? Oh, good. Okay. The budget resolution. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, did you get a chance to look or something? Yeah, I just looked at it now. It looks fine. I think that's the appropriate reference in the in the code. But honestly, this is the first time that I've seen anybody do this. It's the, probably the right thing to do. Yeah, that was on PSAT. But you don't have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you don't have to. You don't have to like re-advertise the budget or anything. No. It's, it's going to be in the budget for next year. They just do we need that. to advertise the the change like for the resolution, or can we just make the resolution? No, you don't have to advertise the resolution. Okay. You just go to go to adopt it. Okay. Do you want to do the honors? No, because I don't have it. <laughs> okay. Um, did, did I see a hand? No? Okay. Um, we don't obviously have to do it right now either. We don't have to so. do it. We could do it next month. Yeah. But okay. when we have it tailored toward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah. just from looking at it, it's it, there's not a lot of no. content to it. It's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. It just provides basically a public record that you've received the money and, and a certain amount. Mm -hmm. And that it's you know in the budget. Okay. Well, in that case, we'll we'll move on to that the next thing for now. Uh, the removal of chemicals by Elk Environmental is in progress. Uh, three men from Elk Environmental worked for about three and three quarters hours to pack up all the chemicals in the garage on Friday, July second. Uh, we are waiting to set a final date for them to come back and remove the palleted chemicals, uh, but we'll finally have all that stuff out of the garage. Um, just as a side note, we had issued Sue uh, the authorization to sign the generator authorization letter, which allowed her to sign off on them collecting the chemicals into one place uh, through one form rather than signing a form for each and every paint can, bucket, or any sort of receptacle that we had in, in the garage. Next is the radio for the emergency management coordinator. Uh, this was a cost of $5,200 and required us signing the Berks County Radio Management User Agreement and System User Agreement. Uh, these were both approved at prior meetings. Uh, I have since signed the notice to proceed letter for the Radio Maintenance Incorporated Kutztown Road Reading, and a motion was made at the workshop meeting to ratify signing this agreement. Um, do we have anything else we want to add to that? When can we expect the letter? Yeah. John. Do you know anything more about the radio? Okay. Okay. Well, hopefully we'll have yeah. some good news by, by next month's <laughs> workshop. Next is the 979 William Penn Boulevard flooding situation. Uh, Jim McCarthy was out with me and one of the other engineers uh, on, I believe it was last month, or shortly before the Board of Supervisors meeting. Um, he recommended, and we actually talked to, actually it was right after the Board of Supervisors meeting, but we, we actually talked to the property owner and uh, went through a bunch of stuff with them and we since mailed a, a letter. So they have a, a physical copy of that and the recommendations. Uh, but the, the pipe ultimately that goes under the road does need to be cleaned out. There is a bit of sediment that has collected in there, I think largely due to the construction that's happening on the opposite side of the road. Uh, and we should reset that end wall. Uh, one of the other things that we're gonna want to do is uh, excavate out a little bit around the pipe. Uh, the right of way actually only extends one foot past the end wall on that road. Uh, so we will need to get permission from the property owner uh, to, to really do any of this because we'll have to go onto their property in order to accomplish it. Um, but we're going to excavate a bit out, put some, some riprap or other stones in there to help slow down water flow. And uh, the property owner that is actively building a house has put in a swale and a retention. Uh, and uh, Kenny is going to be digging in a bit of a, a path for the water that was previously present. It's, it's noticeable when you look at it from the roadway. Uh, but it looks like when they had dug in the well or whoever dug the well in left the, the spoils of digging the well directly in that path, which has created kind of a damning situation. Um, so those three things kind of put together, uh, once all of them are solved or, or should remediate the issue that they're experienced with water and water coming in and getting into their basement. Um, we'll obviously have to keep a close eye on it as some of this starts to develop. The, the game plan is to have Butch go out and do a little bit of exploratory surgery on, on that pipe. <laughs> Um, the concern is that we may have to rent a backhoe depending on that because it is set fairly low compared to road height and high, uh, the, the yard is fairly high. Um, so we don't want to necessarily have him doing that by hand, the whole project. Um, based on what we find, hopefully we won't have to replace the pipe, but you never know until you get it open. Yep. Do we have a date set for them? For them to go out and start digging? I just need to get Butch to go, to go out. For, for our road crew? 
Butch to go out there. Oh, yeah. I just, I need to get Butch to go out there. Like, I told him to do it. He just hasn't had a free point to go out and do it. He's been like mowing and trimming trees and things like that over the past couple of weeks. Um, but it is, it is squarely on the agenda. And we actually had Ryan Allgaier go out and, uh, he raised a couple concerns, but the, the goal here is to get a little better information before we try to get estimates from a company if we have to get a backhoe, whether it's us renting or us hiring somebody. All right. I'm so. just concerned. You know, we just had a heavy rain mm -hmm. today. I'm yeah. sure it's flooded again. Yeah. It actually might be worthwhile to drive by there after yeah. the meeting. Um, usually there's yeah. some pretty telltale signs of like dirt runoff. You can see the yeah. pads and channels and things. Um, after the last rainfall that we had, um, it, what's it? Uh, after the last rainfall that we had, there was a substantial amount of water that had collected in that retention pond and was slowly infiltrating back into the ground or overflowing into the pipe and having a gradual seep into the into the other property. Uh, Jenny, I saw your hand up. Good, yeah, good, good, good. You. Thank you. Um, I'll, I'll probably yeah. drive by too because I'd love to see it. But uh, when we went out, it was a, a really hot, sunny day, but it, it looks like it's a pretty substantial swale and retention yeah. area. So that coupled with, like I said, if we clean the pipe out and they change their drainage on their property, I, I'm very confident that that's yeah. going to solve their problem. Okay. Uh, if we don't have anything else on that one, move on to the next item on the agenda. This is the Western Berks Joint Planning Commission. Uh, per Andy, we need to appoint two supervisors as members. At the July fifteenth, or excuse me, the July fifteenth meeting was canceled and has not been rescheduled yet. Uh, Rabazonia Borough would like to discuss the definition of convenience store to allow for the sale of fuel as a customary accessory without having to be defined as a service station. Uh, at the workshop meeting, a motion was made to appoint uh, myself and Jim as the two representatives to the Berks, uh, Western Berks Joint Planning Commission. Uh, so Jim will keep an eye out for when they reschedule that and uh, we'll attend in kind. Uh, next just, just is, so you, just yes. so you know what's, what that is about. Um, it's probably like the worst kept secret now in Western <laughs> Berks County, but there, there's a Wawa that's proposed on um, Hannah <laughs> Avenue and the Burnsville Robazoni Road. Yeah. So there's about, about four properties that, that sit there that, there's a, I think there's been a plan already submitted from Wawa and um, right now in, in that zoning district, which is town center, so we, we have this here, that mm -hmm. same zoning district now, you, you can have a convenience store, but you can't have a convenience store selling gas. So that would be the intended change to, to allow for that. I'm not sure why. Yeah, it's like that is it, now. Is it just a kind of a legacy thing with where the the zoning exists? Because I, I'd imagine a lot of other places, not everywhere is zoned or uh, classified as a service station. Because places like Wawa and Sheets, they're not really doing service. No, they're not. It's, it's not like a mechanic shop. It's a gas station. Yeah, I think it's just the sign of the times. Maybe the zoning ordinance was was done in 2004. I'm not sure. It's not that old, but I, I just don't know that that was contemplated it, at that time. Yeah, I'd imagine that probably wasn't even considered. Wait, what's but, the location again? Penn Avenue and Robazonia and the Burnville Road, which oh, is I where exactly West where Side is. Auto is. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So oh, it's West Side happy. Auto and a couple <laughs> properties <laughs> to the west. I got to say that would be super convenient because we don't really have a gas station yes. along that stretch yeah. for a bit. Oh, there's the Sunoco. Oh, there's a Sunoco there, but yeah. Almost. We'll, have to, we'll have to keep an eye on yeah. that, but that, that'll be an interesting discussion for sure. <laughs> yeah. You don't have, and again, you don't have to make that change within yeah. Marion County yeah. if you don't want to. Yeah. But right, you but could it's could make just, it applicable yeah. to the yeah. as well. No, I'd, be, I'd be very curious and interested to be privy to that conversation that they have it, because not that I foresee us getting a gas station anytime soon, but it's, it's an interesting, to me, kind of a common sense classification difference between like service station and convenience store but we'll see we'll have to watch that when they have the meeting jim okay uh we do have the, as the next item on the agenda a zoning hearing board vacancy uh attorney keith mooney has recommended several times that we appoint a fifth member to prevent any issues with tie votes um we've had some difficulty in the past locating somebody but uh somebody uh, anthony martin has expressed an interest in being appointed to the zoning hearing board um, I think it's probably a safe bet that we're going to appoint him, but I'd, I'd still kind of like to talk to him before we make the appointment, just to make sure that it's going to be a good fit for, for the needs. Um, so we'll have to collectively see if we can maybe individually get a couple minutes with him, talk to him, and then come back maybe at the next workshop meeting. 
sure. and discuss a little further, but uh, that would be good to have that vacancy filled finally. Uh, next up is the Tulpahawken Police Services. Uh, effective January 1st, 2022, uh, there will be a rate increase from $50,160.52 to $54,246.96, an increase of $340.54 per month uh, for a total of $2,086.44 for the year. Uh, they are also running out of parking tickets for us and had wanted us to purchase more. Uh, we had inquired on if this was covered in part of the, the cost that we pay for police coverage. Uh, the short answer is yes, but no. Um, the secretary informed me that they have run out of tickets for Marion, but they will use Tulpa Hawkins tickets until they run out of those, at which point uh, tickets will be reordered and then the cost would just be split between the two townships. Um, any questions on that, Jim or Irene? No. Okay, fantastic. Yes. Yes. Um, I would have to look at the police report, but I, I want to say it's. Isn't it 60 a month? Yeah, I think it's 60 a month, which shakes down to about 15 hours a week um, for just general regular patrol stuff. Obviously, there might be more if we have calls and things like that, but it's uh, it's about 15 hours a week, yeah. give or take. So like the search and rescue that occurred last month, they were here. Yeah. You know? And that's that's yeah. not something that was. Yeah. Like, it's not like they did 10 hours that day and then took 10 hours from normal patrols. It's right. just there were 10 hours extra that month. Um, yep. There's a typo on there too. It's actually $4,086. 4, $4,086. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. I didn't even notice that in reading that off. So uh, correction oh, yeah, for the yeah. record. Good eye. Um, the increase is actually $4,086.44 annually. That's not what they have in their letter. No. Well, the, the math. We'll go with the letter. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah it depends. Uh, what's the attorney say? It's gonna, the rate's going to increase. Yeah. It's, Bo it's, bottom it's line 4%. is it's it's 4%. Yeah. Generally speaking, it's 4% increase annually. That's what it's been the past number of years. Um, so I would say let's let's add that in for like a workshop on the next month's agenda to make sure that we commit the the actual spend, the update formally into yep. into record. Um because the, the math doesn't jive up. If it was 50,054, then Jim is 100% correct. That's $4,000 different, not two. It's like four points. Certainly. Or something, something, because I did that. Time. Police service that they give to us is approximately 15 hours a week, right? Correct. That's, that's what they do for regular patrols. That's approximately 780 hours a year. If that 780 hours is divided into what we pay, that comes up to just about 70 bucks an hour. Yeah, you're about right. But if you consider wages, cost of fuel, cost of equipment, cost of materials, insurance. that's uh, insurance, um, we're probably still far lower from a cost standpoint, what was that? No, 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 no. I'm saying the cost of that service is probably yeah. far lower than especially yeah. having to do our own police service. Would it be beneficial to the township perhaps to look to hire full-time police officer? No. So there's, there's, yeah, there's a lot of complicated things that goes into that. Um, for example, if you actually have a police force, uh, you have to have dispatch, you have to have a pension, you have to have insurance, you have to have a car, you have to have the upkeep on the car, you have to have the fuel. Yeah, it's, believe me, this is something that prior to getting on the board, I actually sat down with Matt Barnhart about, because one of the things that Matt has a, a passion for is the, the regionalized policing. Um, and one of the things that was into the discussion was kind of a, a cost benefit analysis of what we're doing now, regionalization versus bringing it entirely in house. Um, having your own police force is by far the most expensive of any of those options. And we we use yeah, we, we actually we did have a police force in Marion Township for years and years, and it was disbanded because it was too expensive. It costs about one hundred sixty thousand dollars a year for a full time officer. So cops cops are really expensive. <laughs> Eating, eating. Yeah, no, it's a good question. It's a very good question. But no, this, we've, we've kind of gone down that exercise because like it, I, I think Tulpa Hawkins does a wonderful job. 
Um, but there is a certain, yeah, yeah, there's a certain charm to having police there kind of all the time. But uh, I think we, we, we kind of have the, the best of both worlds right now because it's, it's within our budget. It fits well within our budget and we get a, a good service. I know I've, I've had just recently to call about something and I think you were, you were out there within like 10 minutes of me calling. So, um, because the letter says it's increasing from... It's okay, Sue. 50. Sue, we'll, we'll look at it. We'll look at no, it for next meeting. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> next item on the agenda is the semi-quincentennial for the Commonwealth of PA and the USA. Uh, July 4th, 2026 is the date on that. Uh, we received an email from Paul Jansen at the CELG. They would like all municipalities in Berks to pass a resolution supporting the PA Commission for the USA semi-quincentennial. Um, what we ran into in the workshop is they made this request, but they don't really elaborate on what that actually means. Um, as a high level, they're, they're looking to put in a program that over the next five years does things to encourage uh, awareness and education on things, but they don't really say what the expectation or what the requirements are. So we're, we're looking to get more information on, on what that's going to entail. That's kind of a blanket statement. We're all for having things and events that help bring the community together or provide education or uh, general community building, I'll say, uh, but we want to make sure that we're not uh, putting our name on the dotted line for something that's a little bigger of an ask than we're expecting. Um, so at this point, I don't think we have anything additional on that. We've not gotten any additional detail. So yeah. we'll leave that on as an agenda item yeah. for next month. But just as an aside, Jim had looked into getting flags. Oh yeah, that's actually yeah. a good segue. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Jim, you, I know you had gotten at least one quote. Uh, I, I'm trying to get more quotes, but a lot of the places, because of COVID, are not yep, yep. producing anything. Uh, the, the idea was to perhaps put flags on the, on the poles coming through town. And uh, I don't know exactly what the cost is going to be, but I'll continue to investigate it. Thank you. Yeah, as we move through that, I'm, I'm, I was a supporter of the, the community association putting the signs up. I'd love to see us get more like welcome to Marion Township signs yes. and sprinkle them various other places throughout the community too. So that's something that maybe get some costs around and do to it to at the same time. Well, there must have been signs on the avenue at one point because there's still some of those. Yeah, there's there's brackets. I don't brackets know what they had up, but there used to be yeah. signs. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Or yeah. Yeah, we, yeah, we'd absolutely, um, as much as we possibly can, I, I know it's kind of my personal mentality to work with the community association as much as possible, but whether it's the, the exact same size or that same style, but a little bigger or um, anything like that, we'd want to be coordinated with you in case you guys decide to buy more signs too. So, oh yeah, yeah. Most, most assuredly, there's a couple of different styles of it. So I, I'm a big fan of being consistent, so We'll certainly, as we move through that, we'll, we'll be in touch. Okay, uh, next is the PSATS annual business meeting and centennial celebration dinner. This is being held on October 14th and 15th at the Hershey Lodge. Uh, registration is required for both. The cost of the business meeting is $30 online, which includes a continental breakfast and hot lunch. The celebration dinner, however, costs $100 per person. Um, if you guys want to go, let the secretary know. I uh, I will not be attending because uh, I don't think that's a particularly great use of of money, no. township or otherwise. If I decide to go, I'll pay my, pay okay. my cost. Thank, thank you, Jim. Thank you. Um, so we don't really have anything additional on that. Uh, next is the oh. property maintenance. Um, we're starting to look at a rental inspection ordinance to help safeguard people from certain things around uh, some of the rental properties that we've had complaints of in the past, but have really kind of fallen outside of the realm of what we can action on in certain cases. Um, Jim, I know this has been kind of a, a, a <laughs> I'll say pet project or passion project for you. Um, did you get a chance to look over the ordinance, the sample ordinance that Andy sent? I did, sent? and uh, it looked pretty good to me. It'll give us the opportunity every two years to go in and do an inspection of some of these, some of the properties that are really problems uh, with mold and commodes that don't work and junk cars out in the parking lot with no registration and no license plates. And uh, it'll give us some teeth that we can put into the ordinance that we can 
look for some change from some of these landlords that are doing a horrible job. One in particular. Yeah. Yes. So, um, I, Excuse I, me. Can you say your name and your address? Forty-six Main Street. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm a landlord in a neighboring town. Years ago, um, was not doing anything illegal. My property was clean. Da 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 da. Had a person in the town who just, just had a crawl issue with me at nine o'clock at night. They're banging on my door forever, trying to set me up. It was this very thing of you're doing this, you're doing that, you're doing that. I didn't do any of it. Every single time, they found absolutely nothing. I've never had wool. I've never had garbage. I've never had disparaging looking place, mm -hmm. nothing. So that, just let me know, probably still some fire in my voice, not 20 years ago, of unbelievable. You get one person up there to have something in your crawl for a person like me, and I went through crap. I mean, years of crap. Because one person on that board had an issue, and it wasn't yeah. even with me, it was the previous owner. But I took the front of it. So just realize that there's well, a yeah. thing. We're not yeah. going to be so, doing the inspections. Those will be done by craft. Yeah, players. and just, right. just to, to kind of maybe calm some concerns, this is one of the things that I brought up at the workshop. Much like any of the other things that we enact, one of the, the principal concerns that I try to weigh things against is we want to give ourselves a tool to help people, but we don't want to do exactly what happened to you. We don't want to create an, an unintended consequence where somebody's able to be beaten over the head with it. So this is an exercise on us as we look at our ordinance, other ordinances from other municipalities, trying to craft this in such a way that it can be helpful, but not abused. So what does it do for people like me if that were to happen, if there was someone on the board or whoever it is has an issue with a previous owner of a property, someone on the board, and they take years of abuse. So, so what recourse okay. do the owners have? So the, the, the thing that has the, the teeth in it, so to speak, is it's all general safety stuff. And the requirement being that if you're a, a renting landlord, if you're renting your property out for profit, uh, you would have to have a periodic inspection, generally speaking, every two years. Um, otherwise, it would be basic maintenance that would probably fall into like the IPMC, the property maintenance code. And uh, any complaint that we get, because we don't have craft like actively driving around looking for problems, it's Really, we had we did one kind of level setting lap the township to make sure there, if any problems existed, that they started to get dealt with. Um, otherwise, if somebody makes a complaint, they go out and it's an impartial third party, Kraft being the codes inspector. They look at it and they document if there is an issue or not. So even if somebody on the board or otherwise, you had a fence feud with your neighbor, if they constantly called in and complained and Kraft goes out a bunch of times and goes, there's no problem. Anytime I go out, this person is just... Uh, kind of hung up on one particular thing or just wants to make this person's life difficult, you're not going to see, you probably wouldn't even get a letter from that. The, the complaint would come into the township, craft would go out, look at it and go, no, there's no issues here. So what happens to my rights as a property owner, as someone who pays my taxes? I mean, if you're getting subsidized money from Section 8, from whatever the programs are out there, that's one thing. But if this is a private contract between me and a person that's renting from me, doesn't this get to the point where this also gets to be an infringement? So you should still have to meet basic health and safety stuff. And I'll, I'll turn it over to Andy, but the, yeah, these, these, these ordinances have stood, um, with stood scrutiny in the courts. So they are constitutional. Almost every municipality has a rental inspection program. So it, it's not to it's not to penalize good landlords it doesn't penalize good landlords other than you have to get your property inspected every two years but if you're a good landlord there should be nothing to worry about and you, there might be something that good that comes out of it even if you are a good landlord because something that you don't know about might be wrong and then you can have the opportunity to get it fixed but this is really to address problem issues and these are just safety concerns so there's a checklist that the codes enforcement officer that would be in charge of the inspection program would have so they have a checklist and they go through and they say is there a railing there yes it is is it good is it good um are the are the slats uh close enough together so a child can't get their head stuck in it is the paint peeling stuff like that so that's what they look at we, we also have to think about the other side of the conversation where there is a property where it's putting people's health at risk and people have wound up in the hospital and that property owner is not addressing it. 
So, I mean, I, I think it, it's a pretty heinous situation and we're trying to figure out what we can do to help protect people that really don't have any other options as far as where they reside. So we understand your situation completely. It's not meant to abuse any property owner. It's meant to protect both parties, you know, because some people go into this without full knowledge of what is required in a rental property. So that's going to keep them good as well as protect the health and welfare of the person renting the property. But we already have to go through that for financing. Did your thing high enough? We haven't already gone through. Right. Unless you have a cash flow. Right. I was going to say, unless it's a this cash purchaser. Easier. But right. what I'm trying to say is, we already do right. that. Yeah. Having someone come look at your property every two years just because they can, you know, that's, that's not the right way to do it. We have one area that has highlighted a, an area where we're borderline powerless to help people on. So right. like I said earlier, we're, we're trying to, and we're going to take a pretty decent amount of time to look at this, think this over, discuss this so that we, we craft something that is going to be a, a useful thing, something that's not going to be an, a hardship. Unfortunately, your, you can't have an ordinance it, that would apply just to one. Party. Yeah. Right. So you, you have to be right. fair. That would you be really be nice. Right. 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 The, the, the checks on right right you 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 may have yes. complied when we started, don't know we don't know if there's other problems yeah. too what if you're what if the person you're renting to destroys your property and you're not even aware of it we'll find out every two years and we'll let you know that you know you don't Check out what they're um, yeah. There's You've plenty been, of not, people. Not to mention, it's while well, you might be diligent about that, it's it's not a guarantee right. that everybody is going to be like that. And you have to kind of look out for. And again, it's basic stuff. We're not going in and making sure that your your wall color is a certain shade of fuchsia. It's it's. Do you have smoke detectors up? Is like Andy pointed out, are the railings the right thing so that you don't have tripping hazards or kids getting their heads stuck in them? It's things like that. It's right. to make sure that there's a, a basic standard for if you're going to rent your property out as a business that you have to meet that it's not much different than i'll use like the health inspection for kitchens we're not going anywhere near to that level of degree but if you're providing a service to somebody you have to meet a certain kind of baseline yes it's actually it's kind of like the ipmc be, in the yeah, sense that so it's the richland are in Lebanon County just just adopted this pretty recently. And what they did was, actually, I don't know if they've done it yet, but what the plan is, is to have uh, a meeting with the landlords to go through the process with them and kind of just be transparent about it and say, here's, here's exactly what we're looking for. And they do have it written down. Um, there is a, a checklist that they use when they go through the, the inspection process. Yeah. Um, I did mention this to a couple of gentlemen at Craft, Jeff Hogue and mm -hmm. Glenn Bertolet, and they would like to meet with the, yeah, the we're, three of you, come to a workshop meeting. Yeah, yeah. and just, yeah. just for the record, we're very much like, we only just started like even reviewing this at the workshop meeting. This is very early on in the process, but there would absolutely be a like posted copy of it. It would have to be advertised. There's a lot more discussion that needs to go into this around scope, uh, what the requirements are, who specifically is impacted. Like if you own a couple of properties, but let's say you have a, an in-law that lives in one. If you're not actually renting it out for profit, are you considered a landlord? Or are you not considered a landlord? There's a lot of moving pieces on this that we have to consider. Just so, just to, to stress that again, that we, we give ourselves a tool that we can use to help people rather than hinder people. Yes, Dan. Yeah, honestly speaking, like that is a concern. I'm less worried about property value as a whole as I am around just general welfare and safety. Yeah, so I won't name, name names of the property, but we have somewhere that if we can get access granted, we have some things in the IPMC that we can action against. And the one or two times that we've been able to get into that property or specifically craft, um, we've found a multitude of things that were wrong. And that's just one uh, occupant in a, a long list of occupants. 
having a regular inspection every couple of years is really going to bring that to the forefront. And it gives uh, the power to act on places that are really, truly substandard. Your average homeowner, your, aver or your average property owner that's renting it out, it's, again, like I said, it's going to be things like smoke detectors, um, outlets being correct or not hanging out of the wall, um, Plumbing having GFIs in certain places that are close to water, things like that, things that are really probably going to be evident in every single property other than if you have not maintained your property or have not taken care of it. So uh, if, if you are interested in that, we're going to be, I'm sure, discussing it at the next couple of workshop meetings and board meetings. I would love to have your input. Uh, simply from, as you said, you went through kind of the negative aspect of it. Um, that's as good of a use case as the other one for trying to help people. It helps to tailor the ordinance and the requirements of it so that we, we try to get it as laser focused as we possibly can for what we want it to be. With all the things you just named, GFI outlets, all that stuff you go through when you buy a property. Right. Yeah. Well, let's, let's just say. Right. Let's. Right. Some some property owners haven't gone through that process. Yeah, and, and let's say you paid cash, or, or if you paid your your property off. Yeah. So it's yes, that's one so one if thing. You're, if you're compliant, you have nothing to worry about. Okay. But so what are you worried about? Nine o'clock at night. The neighbor said we can catch you now. They're coming through my. I don't. I don't think crazy. craft codes is going to come out at nine o'clock at night. Right. And over, and they sold it the same way you guys did. Look, we're going to do this for your protection. We right. want to make sure that your rentals are nice. And I'm saying that right. there's a bad You'll be notified in right. writing right. when we're coming. We, we what can't day, help it if people knock on your door, just like people come up to my door at all hours of the day, all hours of night, interrupting my dinner, interrupting my family time, just to discuss an issue with me. We can't avoid that. So, I mean, it's not to do anything to harass you. I had people come up to my door, make all kinds of remarks, very negative and sexist remarks to me. Um, over the past two years, uh, very, very much unwelcome. We can't, we can't help that, but we want to be able to help both sides of it. We want to protect the person that's renting because uh, it's come to our attention that there are people that are being severely affected and they really don't have much recourse as well as the property owner. We want to make sure that properties aren't being, um, uh, we want to make sure property owners aren't taking advantage of renters but if that there's a harassment situation, there's recourse for that as well, isn't there? True. All I can yeah. do is sue them, which costs me more money and more time, which I already had to do. Right. And, I'm right. and the right. person who the never had a thing happen. Why? Right. They were all but in. but just just so with like with with right. But with any kind of a in. business, any kind of a business, you have to deal with that. If you're going to open yourself up to the public, you're going to have people that are going to do things that are not that pleasant. And so, you know, there's not much we can do, but that's not a, what our target is. Not at all. Yeah, just again, yeah. Uh, again, yeah. I, I very much welcome your input. I, I encourage you to come back to the, the subsequent meetings, but the goal here is to protect renters as much as it is to make sure that this is something that's not an undue hardship on people property that are owners. renting, the yeah. property owners. So it's, it's going to be an evolving process as we go through this, but the, hopefully the end result will be something that is not not tough, not unbearable for if you're a renter, a landlord in the township, but gives us the ability to help people when there is a problem. Dan mentioned property maintenance. I've also talked to Andy about doing something with our property maintenance or, uh, ordinance because we're being ignored by a few people in this community who have turned their properties into junkyards for decades and they need cleaned up. And we've cited them. They haven't gone before the magistrate yet, but will be ignored as usual again, probably. And I'd like to see something happen with that because if I lived next door to, to one of these houses, I'd be upset. There's junk in the front yards, the backyards. It's horrible. It's been that way forever. You probably drive by it on the way in here, at least one of them, because I do. Okay. If we don't have anything further on that one, we'll go on to the next item, which is the donation request that we received from Helping Harvest. Um, we do, or at least for this past year, we have donated to Helping Harvest. So I think they sent the letter out a little on the early side as yes. in the next couple of months, we're going to be going through tentative budget for 2022. Um, really no action needed on our part other than to, to kind of make a, a note for if entertaining the idea of giving them another donation in 2022, which I'm, I'm all for. 
Uh, next up is the Berks County EMS dispatch services. Uh, we have been paying police, fire, and EMS dispatch fees to the county annually, which are subject to an annual increase without limitations uh, and decided solely at the discretion of Berks County commissioners. They have decided to fix the annual fee subject to increases based on the inflation index. Uh, the re they request us to adopt a resolution to uh, execute the new agreement to provide dispatch services before 1231 2021. So we don't have to act on that right away. We have plenty of time, but uh, that is something that we'll have to have in subsequent months. Um, was there was there a copy of that? Because I haven't seen a full copy of that yet. Everything is in your yeah. package. Okay. I, there, I don't think there was a fee increase for this year. Was I there? forwarded the email. Yeah. That's all that we done. Okay. Yeah. It, it wasn't. There wasn't everything there. Yeah. Well, not that you didn't forward yeah, everything, yeah. but it's missing some yeah. stuff still. Okay. Um, Every every municipality in the county got this. Yeah. 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 I, I have no doubt that we're gonna have to do it, but I'd like to see all of the, the things for consideration before we do anything with it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Last item on the agenda is the Act 537 plan. Uh, unfortunately, the engineer could not be here with us tonight, so I'll give it a, a quick recap. Uh, we did receive the updated cost estimate for 2021 pricing for the Act 537 plan as it had previously been submitted. Uh, Irene, I think you have that up in front of you. The grand total is up to 6,600 to $605,000. So it's, it's gone up basically a little over a million dollars in the past couple of years. Um, with that said, uh, we're kind of bracing ourselves. We are within our implementation schedule as the plan had been submitted. We have a, a number of months, years even, uh, left before we receive any sort of angry letter or citations around the DEP uh, as we're in the grant research and request phase. Uh, we will be putting a kind of a timeline up on one of the walls for subsequent months for everybody to see so that you can see where we started back in the end of 2019 and kind of where we are in the process. Um, one of the few milestones that we did pass that we were a slight bit delayed on just from things passing in the mail uh, was enacting the on-lot management ordinance, uh, which uh, I'll come to in a second. Uh, but because of the slight delay that we had on that, the DEP was ready with a letter threatening uh, a $300 a day fine uh, if we did not come into compliance. Um, so with that said, uh, the supervisor's strategy on this is we need, we need information. So Part of the, the Act 537 plan and getting the funding is an income study that's required for the grants, but it also gives us an idea of affordability if we can use that as a, a prong in the argument for or against the, the public sewer. Uh, and uh, some other information around the on-lot management. Uh, when people start to pump out their systems, we'll have a pretty good gauge of uh, how many systems are, are truly bad, how many of them are repairable, and how many of them are actually in good working order. Um, so that coupled with the income study should paint a pretty clear picture of need and affordability, uh, along with, uh, we, we obviously can see sources of grant income. We can see what's available and we can kind of dovetail that in to see, okay, how many grants are actually out there? What kind of loans are out there? What are the rates? What does the actual package look like? And where does that stack up against our actual failure rates? Um, the end state hopefully being, uh, if we can't get sufficient funding to make this not an incredibly painful process, uh, having legs to stand on to make a, a cogent legal argument for you can't make this expectation because it, it just doesn't work. Um, so there's a number of things that are in motion on that. And uh, I'll be working with the SEO on getting our 2021 uh, tax property listing filtered down so that it's individual property owners so that the letters can be mailed out, okay. uh, notifying about the pump out requirements for individuals that have an on-lot system. Uh, the way that ordinance works, just as a reminder, is the township is split into thirds and uh, you pump out essentially one quadrant a year for the next three years, getting everybody onto then a once every four to seven, depending on the quality of your system, uh, interval of, of maintenance, inspection and pump out. Irene or Jim, do you have any questions on that? Because no. we've got, like I said, we've got a couple of things in the tracking right now. right now, but yeah. we don't have anything that really is a, a major yeah. like advancement in any one of those. Yeah, I'm just going to post the schedule on the wall so we can all take a look at it. Yeah, I'll, I'll actually, yeah. one of the things I'm going to do is in addition to that schedule is kind of put it on a timeline, like a yeah. ribbon so that you can see like here's 
here's years and here's okay. where the milestones are. Yeah. And you can kind of see where we're at where and at. how far okay. things are from where we're, we're currently at. Um, I think that's it, it is, is it a is. crazy yeah. amount of money when, and especially yeah. when you can fit, consider that's uh, 165 EDUs. Uh, generally, most of those are individual households. Some of them are a couple of EDUs mm -hmm. per property, but you're talking a care. very, very, very small denominator. Yeah. So unless we can get a lot of grant money, that is an astronomical sum for yeah. individual property owners. <sighs> that's the last item on the agenda. Um, let me get to the police report and I'll give that a quick recap. Okay, so last month, it uh, looks like it was a uh, relatively quiet month, all told. Uh, there were a little more EMS fire advisories than normal. There were nine last month. There were a total of 660 miles worth of patrol. Uh, total patrol hours was 51 hours and 70, uh, three quarters of an hour. Uh, really not much else. There were no parking tickets. There was one traffic accident. A um, couple of security checks, but otherwise pretty quiet month all in all. Um, only other... Can we get a report on the speeding tickets that we talked about earlier? Um, there's a traffic warnings, non-traffic citations, and citations. We had a total of five citations, and that can be anything from... There were five traffic stops, so that could be anything from you had a headlight out to you were speeding, or generally, I don't think you guys tend to give, or the, the Tulpa Hawking Police tend to give tickets for things like headlights out. So more than likely, a lot of them were speeding tickets. Uh, but any anything that's a citation issued is the ticket. So here it says non-traffic citations. Above that is citations. Well, I mean, citations. Citations, citations. citations could be anything for if they pull you over. But thank you. Citations, just citations. Does that mean traffic citations? As opposed or like to a parking ticket. It, it is, it but is. Is, is that like a parking ticket or what? Or no, citations are a state traffic citation. Okay. Okay. Parking tickets would be listed separately. Citations are okay. moving, moving violations. Yeah, yeah. What about the municipalities that put up the the machine that calibrates how fast you're going? Right. I don't know. Oh, we have Jim. Jim, we have we have, we have one of those. We have one of those. It's out yeah. in the garage. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, the trouble comes is, yes, there's a little bit of an effect where people slow down when they see it. Some people actually have the exact opposite and they try to see how fast they can get the sign to register. Um, so fun fact, one of the things that like Peter Wallace and I, when we were looking at it, somebody clocked in at over 90 miles an hour on that thing. Well, I believe. So like, yes, it slows some people down, but there are some people that will kind of see it as a challenge. Um, with that said, we do have it. We can use that. It's just, they can't write citations off of it. Yeah, people. I know that. Yeah, it might, that's, it might slow some people down. Yeah. What about automatic ticketing? That's my yeah, it's, that's. I keep on bringing that up. Can't, what, what, what is this? Wow. Wow. What, what can we do about automatic ticketing? Is that a prospect or? I think that's a pretty complicated, automatically Wait, writing tickets. I don't know. No. I don't know where the legal aspect of that stands. And I think from a technological yeah, standpoint, I that's okay. yeah, I, I don't, yeah. I don't know of anywhere that allows that in the state of Pennsylvania, other than like yeah. when you blow through like a, a toll road or something yeah. like that, when you're doing 80, they're obviously, obviously going to give you a ticket for that. But, um, local stuff or even like the state cops, I don't think they can set stuff up and have it automatically ticket. Yeah. I like to be a test subject for that. So, so that that's actually maybe an interesting point. Um, I don't. I know our sign doesn't capture pictures for it, but if if there may be some way of getting a picture, if we right. if we clocked somebody at like eighty miles an hour on Main Street and had a license plate, could we get a letter being sent out? Like uh, it's not a citation, but just hey, we know you were doing this. Um, that might help. Yeah, that might be something to look into. Or if, like, you, if you caught the same person two or three days in a row because they're going home, at least you'd know where to be that particular day, <laughs> what time. Yeah. I mean, just, I thought it was one of the factors, like, like last, just this last week, I had to count five hours of county court for the DUI rollover crash from the town of the table to our court. I'm sure that was, but for the preliminary, we had a pre-trial motion on that for five hours. 
So there's, there's hours to see yeah. that people don't see because of well, we understand that. Yeah. Eight, nine months ago. Yeah. Yep. We understand. Yeah, I completely get it. But uh, that let's I'll look and see if there's anything that we can maybe tack onto that. Because sure. as long as we're not getting into, into any legal hot water, I'm not opposed to the idea of having it snap mm -hmm. a picture and give us information that we yes. can turn over to the police yes. for send a strongly worded letter on yes. please don't do this. Yes. Um, we, social, we, social we know. Um, you know, speeding through, this is a warning. Yeah. Okay. I have two other things in my comments, and then I'll turn it over to you, Irene. Uh, sure. The office printer has unfortunately died, and we had to order a new one. Uh, we discussed it at the workshop meeting. Uh, the new one was ordered, and I believe, so you said it's going to be here the second? I think, I think they said August 2nd. August 2nd? Sure. Um, they didn't have it in stock. Yeah, it's okay. It is what it is. Uh, the other thing is, in the most recent power outage that we had, the battery backup that's on the treasurer's computer has unfortunately fried. We will need to replace it. Um, we don't need an overly big or no. expensive unit. Uh, I, have, I have one personally that is a pretty small battery backup, but it's intelligent enough that you can plug it in with a USB cord and it will shut your computer down in the event of a power outage. The screen that so, went was the township uh, screen, not my, my yeah, it was, screen. Yeah, was, that was the one that I donated yeah. to the township. Oh, okay, so yeah. the other one's so, mine. <laughs> so yeah, if you reboot that computer um, though, yeah. it, it does not like your screen for some reason. I have no so idea why. So the screen that's on now, it yes. doesn't like that one? Yeah, if that's present in the boot order, it does not complete. So, so which one should I use? Use that one. But just, I'll, I'll show you what you have to do. Because we left the other one yeah. off. Yeah, no, it's fine. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm going to change some cabling around because I have <laughs> I have alternative cables. <laughs> uh, for the for future, we should discuss that. But for right now, I have yeah. I have a, a workaround that I can I can donate. It's a difference in cabling that'll help right. it out. But for whatever reason, it does not like having a monitor in that HDMI port. Oh my god! Um, and yeah. just an FYI, that darn thing buzzed mm -hmm. until about two o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. Put it in the flower. Room. <laughs> Stand it. Yeah. No. The oh the, the battery is thoroughly cooked on that thing. There's there's no salvaging that. <sighs> but like I said, I, I bought one. I think it was sixty bucks. Yeah. It's not a not a terribly expensive thing, and it it saves the computer from being the thing that fries in the event of like brownouts or blackouts. So. Uh, I actually have not gotten any word of what caused that. Do you know? <laughs> oh, fantastic! Can you tell us? <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. Uh, <laughs> in case the uh, it made the whole couch go out. Yeah. In, in, in case the in case yeah. the recording didn't get that, that most recent power outage was caused by a raccoon in the power lines. <laughs> Ooh. It's it's the smallest thing sometimes that can do it. Wow. <laughs> well, he won't do that again, will he? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, he certainly won't. Yeah. Um, that's all I had for my comments. Irene, yeah. I know you have a few. Yeah, I guess continuing on that and, and just uh, bringing up more of the stuff we were talking about the workshop, the large copier, um, we were talking about um, either looking at replacing, leasing, stuff like that. Jim, do you have any suggestions of places to look at? There's, I know you talking about there's a lot of service. companies that will sell you a used one. You just okay. have to be careful okay. and make sure that you know, they're going to certify it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I've never bought, for my business, I've never bought a new one. Okay. I've always bought used and I've used a couple different uh, local people. And yeah. Pass on I've the information. Been I'm going to make some phone calls and get some prices. Yeah. Yeah. So. I, I've started looking around new okay. ones. If you're going to buy new, like a, a multifunction device for an office is anywhere from like two and a half to four and a half thousand. Um, if you buy used, yeah. generally they're between 800 <laughs> to a thousand, sometimes a little more yeah. if you're getting one of the fancier yeah. ones. Any leasing programs? There's the leasing service. programs. Yeah, and, and, and you, you can lease. That's certainly yeah. that's certainly an option. Yeah. But I've just been exploring the initial opening of, okay, what is this going to cost? Because yeah. the, the existing unit is pretty aged and yeah. it has a scratch in the drum. The drum is the, yeah. unfortunately, the most expensive part of that copier. And if we pay somebody to come out, we're looking at probably a couple hundred dollars yep. for that drum yep. and then probably a couple hundred dollars in, in labor to get the thing completely serviced. Yeah. So if we're looking at four to five hundred dollars on repairing that and that's got to be at least 10 to 15 years old yeah at least at least, at least. That, that's me yeah. being that's me being polite all right um I, i'm yeah. sure uh, yeah. so that was just me being polite in an estimate um but if we're going to spend 500 dollars on on that it may make more spend, sense to spend the extra 300 dollars and get something that's within the past yeah. five years all right so the, the one that we about. that we're using in my office now is probably we've had it for about four years so it's probably at least six seven years old hmm. Uh, but they also, we were able to get a maintenance agreement. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's we pay like less, I think we pay like $140 a year yeah. and they come out and even change the toner cartridge. Yeah. Well, apparently we did so, have a maintenance so, on yeah, the agreement, we, but they, 
we did and it got discontinued because i think the company uh basically said they, they didn't want to get yeah. parts anymore yeah exactly so uh, whether they couldn't or didn't want to is really mm, yeah. kind of a sticking Absolutely. point but yeah, yeah. That thing's yeah. That's yeah it's 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 a relic it's it still works we can continue to use it until we find a replacement but rather than putting a bunch of money into fixing it it would be much better served to look at replacing mm -hmm. at this point it's it's certainly past its useful life mm -hmm. I mean, that's the one thing that if you're copying any amount of copies, mm -hmm. that's yeah. the one to use. Yeah. 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 All right. The other item was the um, we need to update the subdivision and land development ordinance and fees, as well as the stormwater management ordinance and fees. And I think that's something Jim McCarthy can help us out with. Is that oh, correct? I know. We well, talked about that before. Yeah. And it just sort yeah of no we're gonna goes away. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so so this could this could be dealt with for the most part in an email sue informed me that the stormwater ordinance is from 2002 the fees are from 2002 and the subdivision and land development is from 1991 and the fees haven't been updated since 2005 and so the problem is um um the fees that we're, we're asking people to pay doesn't even cover the cost that for the township to um to that we're getting charged to get reimbursed yeah. for so to it doesn't even cost them. the um engineering fees when, when they're going on doing these things so the problem is we're eating the cost so we need to update these fees so that we're not eating the cost and it doesn't cost the taxpayers um because the money's coming from somewhere so we want to make sure that the fees are correct in our ordinances and uh, people are being charged so that it's it's a it's a wash when it comes to these fees we don't make money off of it but when we're charging someone for um, a, a project, sketch plan, review. yeah, so that um, when we get charged by the uh, engineering firm that they pay us, we pay them and everything's good, so. Not to mention it's a good opening to going through a lot of the other ordinances oh, yeah. that just haven't been gone through for a while, so it's yeah. a it's Can a you good let Jim know one. that we'd like to act on that next month? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I could shoot him an email. Well, I yeah. think it's yeah. going to take a little bit more than yeah. a month. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. going to be more than a month, yeah. but I'd like to have Jim McCarthy. Yeah. I actually wanted to have him here at the meeting tonight, but he had a yeah. And you a just conflict. said that it went away yeah. a while back. I don't want it to go yeah. away. Anymore. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, so, so, Jim, we'll yeah. keep it on the agenda until yeah. we're done with yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, Sue's wonderful. Like, yeah, when, when things come in, there's so many different fees that are involved, and we have to go through each one of them and update each one of these in our ordinances. There's so many things, like, uh, unless... Honestly, if I hadn't had to pick this apart, I wouldn't have known any different, yeah, but I still don't um, understand. Yeah, there, there's just so much detail, and so much information. So we need Jim McCarthy's help with it. Yeah. Okay. Do you have any other comments? No. Okay. Fantastic. Jim, do you have any comments? No, none. Okay. Andy. I just have one. Uh, did you guys hear about the amendments to the Sunshine Act? No. I know you're on the yeah. 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 Like, yeah. I didn't have a time. I had no opportunity to look through it. So, we know about the posting of the materials yeah. on the website 24 hours before. Um, That's the main thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. the main thing. It's not effective yet, but it is effective at the end of August. I think August 30th. Yeah. And we'll, we'll have so that. We'll apply to our September meeting. And at, at first, I thought the changes were, were huge, but the more I read it, they're not bad. There's a lot of exceptions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for emergency things that come up or something mm -hmm. that's come up within 24 hours before the meeting, you can still act on it. But I think it's designed to basically have municipalities not, not going to spend money or enter into contracts for things that aren't on the agenda. Mm -hmm. So that's the main goal. Mm -hmm. The rest of the stuff's kind of common yeah. sense. Mm -hmm. If you do need to do something, there's, there's a provision that says, well, you can vote to and then the agenda to include whatever you want to do. That's that's want it. that's good to know. Yeah, and then you have to post the amended agenda. I think within twenty four hours on the website or at the meeting. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll definitely. The, the website's up and available now. We just have to load content into it. Um, I know I had reset various usernames and passwords for people. So if you have any problems getting in under your IDs, let me know. Okay. Um, you, let me know what mine is. You, you, you should have gotten an email. If you didn't get it, I'll, I'll resend it. Okay, I'll resend it again. Because okay. the way that works is you get a personalized email under oh, like your email address where you can go in and you set your password. Oh, okay. um, like I, I don't have the credentials. I don't know what your, your sign in is. It's just to you. Oh, okay. So oh, I can I, I can send it again. I can okay. even do it when, when I'm on the phone with you to make sure it comes through. Okay. Mine came through in like 30 seconds. Okay. 
um, but we'll get everybody kind of up to speed. But I, as time permits, before work, after work, that kind of thing, I've been just chipping away, getting little stuff in that I can. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have to make a, a more concerted push of getting things like the ordinances up, um, just doing things like before the meeting, uploading the public agenda, things like that. Okay, uh, Sue. Nothing. Okay, phenomenal. Uh, in that case, I will make a motion to adjourn the meeting. The time is now 8.31 p.m. I should, I should have said thank you. Is there you. a second? Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Yeah. Meeting adjourned. I apologize, Sue. I forgot to say thank you for all the.